Hello and welcome to episode number 200 and is it 96? Yeah, of the TWA to A Challenge Run. This is going to be Monday Night Raw for week 2 of October 2022 and it's going to be the go home shows to clash at the castle on the Raw side, you know? We know on the Raw side, we know the Raw Women's title match, Bianca Belaria Ripley. You know, the World Heavyweight Championship match, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. And maybe there could be more Raw matches announced tonight, because it's very SmackDown heavy as it stands. But without any more further ado, let's jump into this go-home show. We've got a big show tonight anyway. We've got um, Raw Tag Team title match, Path of the Dragon defending against the Bionic Breed. We've got Sasha Banks taking on Julia in the main event. We've got... Um... Another match that I cannot remember. I know, I definitely announced one. Oh, the in-ring debut of Emerson Frost and Ken Cobain. We have Damian Priest versus Kofi Kingston. And we have, is it Matt Riddle and Andrade? Yes. Without any further ado, though, let's get into that gaggle of goodness. 96 rated opening segment. Face to face, Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley. Bianca comes out first this time. She goes, So... But we're in five nights time, we're going overseas, clash at the castle, you know, Cardiff, Wales. It's going to be a spectacle. And I'll be there. I'm going to defend my role with Miss Championship on that show against my number one contender, Miss Rhea Ripley. You know, Rhea, got to hand it to Rhea, you know, she's, she's doing her best to emulate me. You know, last year I won the Royal Rumble, went on to WrestleMania main event night one and won the SmackDown Women's Championship. This year, Rhea Ripley, she won the Royal Rumble, went on to main event WrestleMania and I won, won the Royal Women's Championship, you know. We're like two peas in a pod, me and her, girl, but the reason why she managed to get that championship is because I wasn't there gunning for it. You know, I was on SmackDown, doing my thing. But then I got that first chance to wrestle the championship from Asuka at SummerSlam. I took the title and I've got no plans on giving it up for you. I know you're going through this whole phase right now, you think you're God's gift to wrestling. Girl, uh-uh. You're not the best in this division, because that's me, the B-E-S-T. And I'm going to walk into Cardiff with my championship, and I'm going to walk out still your Raw Women's Champion. And then Rhea Ripley comes out, her music hits. And she goes, Bianca, you know. I, again, you know, you're sitting here, you're paying me all these compliments. I'd love to say that I can return them, but I'm not because I used to have respect for you. But then you paraded yourself around as the fake Raw Women's Champion. You didn't have any guilt walking around here of that title that you don't deserve because that should be my championship. But it, it doesn't matter because I only have five more nights, you know. You carrying that championship is my nightmare. But it's okay because my nightmare ends this Saturday night in Cardiff, Wales. While yours, Bianca, yours is only just beginning. Because you've got to sit there and realise you took the championship all the way over there. Only to lose it. And it's coming home to mommy. And Bianca's like, girl, well, why, why say why wait till Cardiff, you know? You're here, I'm here, I'm ready to whoop that ass. And Rhea goes, no, I'd love to, but, you know, we're in the XL Center. And I don't waste my time wrestling people in the XL Center. So, if it's a match with me, you'll, you want to be angry. You're going to have to, you've got five days to wait. But let me tell you this. As a friend, it's not a match with me you want to be angry. Because you're way in over your head getting in the ring with me. And you're going to find that out the hard way at a clash at the castle. See you there, girl. Eighty rate opening match. Apparently there's not enough psychology here. That's why I only gone 80. I really had this being, you know, big banger. Like, like all the other Path of the Dragon title defences have been. But apparently I, I knew they had good psychology, all of them. But apparently it wasn't that good to go 20 minutes. Um, lack of psychology here was the issue. But Path of the Dragon retain again. Dijakovic gets pinned by the diving senton by um, Tozawa. 
to make defense number three of the Raw Tag Team titles. Humberto gets an 81, an 80 for Tozawa, a 90 for Buddy, and a 74 for Dajakovic, you know. Buddy Murphy scoring a 90, that's really fucking good. I need to find a way to heat him back up, you know, because he has got that main event cred in my save, but he's just doing the tag team thing for right now. <laughs> he's, he's essentially the AJ Styles to Omos here. Except Dajakovic is doing more in the match instead of just being the big giant that gets hot tagged in and doing a couple of moves. Yeah, but 80 rating, I, I expected better. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna put it, sugarcoat it. I expected better, but apparently the psychology was not good enough to do 20 minutes, which I think is bullshit because like your average match goes 20 minutes in real life now, and <laughs> they don't really drag that much. Maybe a little for some of them. But then after the match, Malcolm Bivens, he comes out flanked by Veer Mahan. I imagine they're all in suits, you know, because Veer looks, looks dapper in a suit. And Omar C, to his credit, he does as well. You know, I saw him on SmackDown recently. He, yeah, you know, that, that man cleans up nice. But Bivens is like, boys, 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 you know, congratulations. You're really proving the world wrong on this tag team championship reign. Another big victory. For Humberto and for Tozawa. Unfortunately, your boy Zergis couldn't say the same back at Unforgiven. Because finally, this man, the million dollar arm himself, Fear Mahan, he came! After months of waiting and edging and edging and edging, he came. And he exploded in that ring on you, Zergis the Mighty. Not that the 7 for 4 Nigerian giant Omas needed his help. But it's nice to be assured that my powerhouse trio here do drop or dominate the raw tag the raw women's division and when they so feel like it omas and veer mahan can take whatever title they want and that includes yours so watch your back boys because we're coming backstage segment alexa's in our office tim and ivy are there as well obviously when tegan and kylie ray walk in and they go, so Alexa, it's been a week. And she goes, yeah, you know. You see, I was actually agreed to what you were saying, you know. I think if WWE's coming to Wales and we have a Welsh girl here on the roster, you know, she should be able to get a match in the front of that hometown crowd. Tegan goes, great, that's that's great, so who am I facing? And Alexa goes, but I think you've got to earn it first. I'm just going to put you on that show. So how about it? You two win your tag team match tonight. I'll sort you out a match for, for Clash at the Castle. What do you say? Tegan goes, well, that's awesome, you know. But who are we, who are we facing? Who, who are our party opponents? Alexa goes, well, wouldn't that give you the upper hand? <laughs> Shinsuke and Vic Boog's backstage, and Boog is going, you know, Shinsuke Nakamura, you picked up one of the most dominant victories of your career last week, you know, the lap match lasted. Count them. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, eight goddamn seconds, you know, that's how I'm going to take you to rev up my solo on this gear guitar. But you know, Shinsuke Nakamura, the King of Strong Style, proved that he's not a man to mess with in that ring last week when bum ass Baron Corbin got in that ring and Shinsuke Nakamura told him, Yo, you're hungry, Corbs, here, eat this knee, ka -chow. Now, I'm sure you're aware, WWE has a big premium live event in just over two weeks time we're going to tokyo japan and what better way what better place than for shinsuke nakamura to become the world heavyweight champion and corbin walks in uh, shirts even dirtier hair even less unkept than normal because shinsuke Last week you got lucky because I wasn't expecting you to hit me like right away with that knee, but I'm not really in the state to to fight you right now, you know. I just <laughs> I don't know what to do. I need spooks. You you can help me, right? Because well, Corbin, you didn't want to be in the down in the dumps. Maybe you should have been more careful with your savings, buddy. And then Shinsuke and Boogs walk off and Corbin goes, no, please, I, I I can't eat, you know, my wife, she kicked me out of the house again. 
I've been sleeping in the shed for a week. I think she's going to leave me. Take the kids. Come on, guys. Like, this isn't very nice. Hey! 90 rated match. This is Big Gunts' role here. He is putting on banger after banger after banger. Call him Seamus. Because he fights Roderick Strong here. Who, um, I looked at the people on the brawling on my roster who I could put in this match. Roddy had, like, the highest brawling out of anybody that was available. And I thought, yeah, that will bang. So we get Gunter and Roderick Strong. Um, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish are probably out there with Roddy, while the rest of the people coalition are out there with Gunter. And it's just a war, you know, the chops of these two are delivering each other. Like, both men leave the match with big red chests with big handprints on them. But there can only be one winner, and he's Gunter, who stands tall. The rest of the Regal Coalition stand by his side. Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish probably get into the ring when Pete Don and Dudley jump on him and start beating them up as well. And Regal like, orders them to keep on beating him up. And they hold Kyle O'Reilly up, probably specifically Kyle, because he'd sell it like fucking death. And he'd take a big Gunter chop as well while he's being held up by Dudley and Pete. And then he, they go to do the same thing to Bobby Fish. Bala, he's here. The demon has arisen here on Monday Night Raw. He does the full entrance, the entire the entire demon entrance here on Raw. We treat the live fans here to a full demon entrance. Throws the arms up in the air and all that shit as I guess the viewers can watch on. Then obviously Regal and Florence would back away because they're the two that aren't going to get physical. And I guess maybe Kyle, Bobby, and Roddy can like. Fight off with Ridge, Pete, and Dudley to like get them out of the frame and maybe set up a fun match down the line there. In fact, yeah, let's do that. Let, let's actually do that right now. That is a thing because I can put that on the Clash of the Castle pre show. <laughs> so, <laughs> then we get Gunter and Bala face to face. Bala the demon. Um, Gunter chops him. And the demon just takes it and he finally delivers a forearm. He rocks the ring general. Another forearm, another forearm. And then he hits him against the rope. Sling blade takes him down. He goes for the corner. He goes for that. He hits that big shotgun drop kick. Down goes the ring general. And up to the top rope goes Balor. He's going to hit that coup de gras. But then Gunther is pulled out of the ring by probably Ridge and P and Dudley to cause of booze. And they stand outside the ring and shout at him. And the demon does a big dive and he leaps on all of them, taking them all out to the floor. So yes, we would then announce that at Clash at the Castle, they're going to get Gunther vs Finn Balor part 2. But it ain't Finn Balor anymore, it's Balor the demon. So that's always a thing, I haven't done it at all in this save, it's always a thing I've thought. Like when people, when they were always cutting people's names down, I was like, you know... Finn Balor is obviously his name, like, I wouldn't cut that down, but having that be Finn, and then the demon himself is the Balor. So, like, just taking the Finn off when he wrestles in the demon paint, it would kind of change it up a little bit. So that's the idea I'm actually going to go with from here on out, is just the, this version of him. The, ignore the graphic, the graphic still says Demon Finn Balor for Clash of the Castle, but I made that before that I decided to do the name change. But any time he wrestles as the demon, he's just Balor. And then Finn Balor is the, the guy with the jacket and all that shit. So yes, Gunter versus Balor. Clash at the Castle. The match that we were robbed of from Unforgiven. I say robbed of, Gunter won fair and square, but... You know, the actual encounter here. 
this one won't end in two minutes, I'll tell you that. Unless I'm bluffing you. Montez Ford, he's on his phone backstage, he goes, come on Dawkins, Dawkins, pick up, pick up, pick up. And obviously there's no service, he goes, oh god damn it. He turns around and it's Mustafa Ali. And he goes, hey, he goes, you know, what's going on with Dawkins lately, you know, you and... You and him, you still seem like your friends, and I really like that good because you're a great tag team. I hope it doesn't, you know, cause a wedge between you two. But he seems kind of like he really wants to prove himself. He goes, yeah, I guess when I was away of an injury, Dawkins, he, he got that taste of single spotlight. And I guess me coming back has, has sort of like put him back in line as a, ta as a, a quote unquote tag team guy. I mean, I, I've got no problem with that. I mean, we could be the best tag team in the world, but, you know, sometimes you, you do strive for a little more. And Ali goes, he's right, you know. He needs an opportunity to become the Incarnate Champion, and I'll give him an opportunity to become the Incarnate Champion. Next week, I'll defend this title against Angelo Dawkins. And Tess goes, well, that's, that's great. Dawkins will love that, you know. I'll go, if I can ever contact him, I'll let him know the good news. So, yeah. P Penciled in for next week. Mustafa Ali versus Angelo Dawkins for the Intercontinental Championship. <laughs> Impulsive or pri prime time, probably, because it's Logan and KSI. Prime time, the talk show is here. Logan Paul and KSI come out to the ring and they go, Yo fam, check it out, you know, we're coming back to the UK. This Saturday night, Clash at the Castle in Cardiff, Wales. Your boys are going to be there, you know. You know, back at SummerSlam, we whipped the Miz and Grayson Waller's ass, KSI. And, quite frankly, I'm, us being, you know, boxers, fighters, I'm always in an ass, kit and ass whipping mood. But unfortunately, we don't quite have opponents for the pay-per-view just yet. So, come out there, who wants to get their ass kicked? <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. Out comes Karrion Cross, Carcass and Cutler, and he goes, Hey, listen here, kids. I thought I warned you not to come back to my show ever again because I'd put you down. And then Logan goes, look who it is, JJ. It's the same guy we saw like two weeks ago. Oh yeah, that big idiot. He goes, who are you calling a big idiot? I don't think you're taking my threat seriously. And Logan goes, nah, not really. If you got me there, yeah. <laughs> Karen Cross goes, well, well kids... You say you wanted to be Clash at the Castle, but we're going to be spelling that with two K's. Clash with a K, at the Castle with a K. Because Karrion Cross and a member of the Cross Call challenge you to a tag team match. You're going to go to Cardiff with a K, and you're going to die there. It'll be your last resting place. And quite frankly, after what you've done mocking me, it's what you deserve. I would say it's nothing personal this time, but it might well be. But you should be thanking me for taking you out of this cruel world. And Logan goes, well, that's a lot of that's a lot of words you're saying there, buddy. But, like, come on, which one of you two is going to be? Who are you teaming with? And then from behind, Logan Paul is jumped by Carland, who takes him down. KSI tries to spar with him. But in the end, the Carrion Cross cult come into the ring because they're like, oh shit, he's here. And then Carland will pick up Logan Paul and choke slam every whatever table they've got in the ring. And Karen Cross sort of look Carlin gets onto one knee, sort of like you know, worshipping Carrion Cross. And Karen Cross just chuckles, he's like <laughs> and rubs his head, brings him in for a hug, and finally accepts him as an official member of the Carrion Cross cult. And he goes, <laughs> Me and this kid here. We'll see you on Saturday night. Nothing personal. <laughs> so yes, tag team match set for Clash at the Castle. Logan Paul and KSI taking on Karrion Cross and Garland. Dream match. Put it in your calendars. Here's a segment. I don't think this match needs any more setting up after last week. I know I installed that no contact clause, but I've changed plans since then. They're not going to touch because Drew McIntyre is already in Scotland. And we get a training video of him, like like they did in real life, all those really cool training videos of him coming home and shit. We're going to air one of those on Raw to, like, gas him up. 
But then we're also going to get Erwan or Seamus also doing the same thing. And he's bringing the belt back to Dublin, and you know, it's just, you know, just over the pond. And he says, oh, fellow, I finally won this World Heavyweight Championship. You think I'm losing it after three goddamn weeks? you got another thing coming, fella. A clash of the castle, I'm going to break you, your hearts and the hearts of everybody in that United Kingdom who's hoping that you're going to do it for them once again, just like you did at SummerSlam last year. But that's not happening, Drew. It's my time. And you don't get a turn. Eighty-two. <laughs> Matt Riddle sustains a damaged heel, which I guess um took the match down a bit. That's all he gets for not wearing shoes, I guess. Yeah, it was the injury that really disrupted the match. But Andrade wins anyway. He wins with the Hamlock to your team, thirteen fifty-nine. Um, an eighty-seven for Andrade, and yeah, a seventy-six for Riddle. The injury really hurt him. I don't know if damaged heel is a big injury or not, but we shall see. Andrade apparently caused the match. Is he trying to get fired from here as well? I, I don't know. <laughs> Backstage segment. Morgan is in her locker room, like, kind of upset herself, like, reflecting on last week's loss because they lost to Raquel and Zelina. When Hams walks in, she goes, she grabs a plate and she goes, Hello, friend. What's, what's up? She goes, Where'd you get that food? She goes, Oh, someone left it behind in catering. And you know me. And she's like, Yeah, you sure are. You sure are a... A person. You're my hammy, you know? We need to get back on the same page here because... Well, not the same page. They're still on the same page. But they need to start winning. You know, we came into Smack... We came onto Raw with all this momentum and fire. We nearly took the tagging titles on our first night. And since then, it's just been all downhill. Are we in over our heads? And Hammy goes, look, friend. We can do whatever we want if we have each other. And she goes, you know, that's a nice cliche line to say. But what does it really mean in this context? Because we have each other and we've been losing. And then from off count we hear, Oh my god, no! And Corbin walks in. And he just looks at Hams. He goes, What are you doing? And she goes, Eating, friend. Why? Because you're eating my... Oh. I, I, I haven't eaten all week. I haven't had enough money to buy food. You know, I had to scrape yesterday's dinner out of the can. I thought, lovely, finally time to come to Raw, eat the delicious fresh catering they've got here, and you've ruined it. You've... Ugh. And then Morgan's like, well, why don't you go back and get some more, you know, there's plenty left. And he goes, no, there's not. This little vermin here has eaten all of that as well. And she's just laughing, and haha, I was hungry, sorry. And she, he goes, you know... Is this karma? After all these years, is this karma finally catching up to me? And then, I give, I'd imagine Hams would spill the plate or whatever, and it would stay in Corbin's shirt some more. And he's just like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> Felt like an inevitable segment I had to do was Hams accidentally eating Corbin's food. I say accidentally, did it on purpose, because it's Hams. Speaking of segments I had to do, the anime boys are back. And Sensei's going, look, Dio is... They still have... Dio's still missing. I don't know where Dio's gone since our failed quest to defeat Joe Gacy and the Helpers at SummerSlam. That was two months ago at this point. We need to get back on on track and get back to focusing on the goal and that's getting that pendant back and more importantly getting that pendant away from Joe Gacy we are a man down quite a big man as well you know the biggest man here but we're not going to give up because we have the power of God and anime and friendship on our side and those are like the three number that's like the triforce of anime cliches and man he's like did you say anime itself is an anime cliche and sensei goes well Maybe tub that out for something else. I don't know, courage or some shit. Anyway, one of the matters is that we have each other. And we're never going to give up. You know, in the words of John Cena himself. This fill of rock we're in right now is over. It's time to get back to work. So we, we could nearly be among season two of anime shenanigans. 
I know you're all excited for that. 70. That is fine. <laughs> it's not even these two that I'm concerned about in this match. It's fucking Shanky. <laughs> but Titus World Records felt like the team to put in there against Emerson Frost and Ken Cobain in their Raw debut. Emerson pins Slim Shanky with a triple C. Ken Cobain is head and shoulders above everybody else. He got a 69. 56 for Emerson Frost, 59 for Arch Roof, and good old Slim Shanky there. Rounding it out with a 44, you know, <laughs> dragging the match down. But we love him anyway, and Titus World Records losing this week. We then get a segment. Dolph Ziggler, he gasses up his boy, goes, wow, look at that. Grand jury success yet again. We're already seeing results here, you know. Emerson and Ken Cobain arriving here on Raw, winning their debut match, you know. Sonya Deville, she's not in action this week, but, you know, she's going to dominate her way to the top of the Raw women's division. Scarlet, the lovely, sexy Scarlet, you know. Just, we win by her being out here. Look at it. Look at her. Then, of course, Damien. He's going to put Kofi Kingston down. Coming up next. Or later on tonight or whatever. And then in the main the main event of WWE Monday Night Raw, Julia will beat Sasha Banks. And that's the Grand Jury on their road to dominance. And then we hear Dolph, 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 please. And Corbin comes out, no music or anything, just bomb ass Corbin going down the stage. And he goes, Dolph, Dolph, please, you know, look, it's me. It's it's Corbin. And Dolph goes, What the hell happened to you, brother? And he goes, look, you are, you've been in WWE for well over 15 years at this point, Dolph. You must have accumulated a lot of money at that time. You made a nice steady living for yourself, you know. You never used to leave when everyone used to say you were being underutilized. You used to stay around because you wanted to make that bag, Dolph. And he goes, yeah, it's true. It's true. Hear the man out. I'm just wondering, can you lend a brother some in this time of need? Can you let me into the grand jury? And Tricicler looks at Corbin and he goes, Okay, I need to discuss this with the group. He turns around and pretends to like start talking to the group where he's just sitting there, like, obviously faking everything. Pretending like he's thinking about where he's going to let Corbin. And he goes, You know what, Corbs? Yeah, you can come in. Corbin goes, Really? And Corbin go and Tricicler goes, Yeah, yeah, we could always use a new member. And Corbin's like, oh my god, thank you so much, Dolph. I always needed, I always knew you'd be there when I needed you. The <laughs> super kick lays out Corbin. And he goes, ha ha. You wish in your dreams, bomb ass. Maybe make sure you're not wasting all your money next time, you dumb idiot. <laughs> so Corbin baited. Bomb ass Baron Corbin is not going to be in the grand jury. Because even though he's Baron Corbin and we hate him, you know. Beating him up does make you look a bit of a dickhead. <laughs> so, <laughs> had to have Dolph Ziggler do that. Bandana Dolph, you know. He's got the bandana on as he does it. Maybe he, he maybe he adjusts it after he does the kick because it came a bit wonky. Nova Nebula segment. It's like we get like a scene of, you know, a night sky with like all the stars in it. And like there's a hill and Nova just comes and sits on the hill. I guess. And then she's narrating over it. She's like, I'm not forgiven. I really showed the world what I was capable of, you know. A lot of women come out here and they, they, they'd be reflecting on where it all went wrong and I'm forgiven. But for me, honestly, it all went right. Because Bianca Belair, well, she is what she says she is. She is the roughest, the toughest, the quickest, the fattest, and the best in this division. And I imagine, like, as she's talking about it, it's like a weird video of her, like, laying on a hill, like, stargazing. And then it, it splices in clips of the match at Unforgiven and shit. She goes, so I'm not actually here to reflect on the past and what I could have done better. I'm here to reflect on the future and what's next because what that was what happened at Unforgiven was I, I proved that I belonged here on this plane of existence. That was not just one small step for man, that was one giant leap for me. So, I'll keep my head up high. I'll come back to Raw with a new look, a new attitude, well not new look, she's going to stay the same, but a new, a, new, a new look on life, I guess, a new attitude, a new motivation, because I will be 
the Royal Women's Champion. And you're all coming along on this ride with me to the greatest galaxy I've ever been. Tegan and Kylie Ray are in the ring, awaiting their opponents, you know. If they win, they go to Clash of the Castle and be here. <laughs> and he goes, Ladies and gentlemen, be boys and girls, children all around the world, I ask you all now, silence. While the Shakespeare of song, the king of the, of the battle of the bands, the bard himself, the artiste, introduces to you the next greatest women's tag team here in WWE. And the women who will defeat Tegan and Kylie tonight and will then go on to defeat those irritances that call themselves a J-pop band and become the women's tag team champions. Give it up for V X T. Out come Deanna and Chelsea Green, you know, VXT. I thought that I needed another heel team on Raw. Like, looking at this week specifically, uh, that was abundantly clear. And, yeah, they are a team in real life. And I thought they kind of fit, like, you know, the whole Virtuosa thing. She's actually teamed with Aiden in Impact. I think they're like the homecoming king and queen or whatever. And Chelsea would fit as well, because she's sort of like that sort of cocky bitch. So yeah, that's the team. VXT are here. And their debut match gets a 56 and they injure Kylie Ray's cheekbone in it. <laughs> um, yeah, they win. Um, blatantly cheating. Deonna submits Kylie with the Fujiwara Ramba. Um, Tegan was head and shoulders. Chelsea Green was the weak link. It's fine, she's new. Um, 79 for Tegan, 65 for Kylie, 55 for Deonna, and a 45 for Chelsea Green. And yeah, um, I didn't put a specific finish in there. I remember I took that out because I put a segment in instead. It's fair. We then see Angelo Dawkins. You know, he's just heard the news. He comes up to, like, Kathy Kelly or whatever comes up to him and goes, Dawkins, I finally found you. You know, we've been looking for you all night. Did you hear the news that next week there's an open invitation for you versus Mustafa Ali for the Iguanel Championship if you want to take it? And he just sort of looks, stares at her, all frustrated. He goes, was this, whose idea was this? Was this Tez's idea? Is this his way of trying to, like, cheer me up? Is this a handout, fam? Look at you, you don't think I deserve this title opportunity, do you? Kathy goes, well, I, th I think you're awesome, you know. I think you could, you could, you deserve that. Like, well, he goes, I don't want to hear it. Nobody thinks I deserve shit around here. You know, I love Tez to death, but... If he's trying to, you know bottom me up, give me opportunities that he doesn't think I actually deserve, then maybe he should spare an influence on me as, as, and then they both sort of look off camera weird as into the framework, Joe Gacy and the helpers, he goes, what's with all the negativity Dawkins, you have been gifted a once in a lifetime opportunity, you've been gifted the chance to be the intercontinental champion, but here you are. Doubting yourself. You see, Dawkins, opportunities to become the Intercontinental Champion don't come around every day. And if you, in yourself, believe that you deserve to be the champion and nobody else does, then you know the best way to prove those people wrong, Angelo, is to go out next week, defeat Mustafa Ali, and become the new intercontinental champion that way you find peace within yourself because you know you could get the job done 
And you also find satisfaction from the people who didn't think you could get the job done. And then I also sort of walk off. And Dawkins just like stares at him like weird as he walks off. And he turns back to Kathy Kelly like, you still here, Kathy? And she's like hiding behind Dawkins because she's scared of Joe Casey and them. She goes, yeah, I'm still here, yeah, but And he goes, tell Mustafa Ali. I'll see him next week. We then follow Tegan and Kylie into Alexa's office. And obviously Kylie Ray's holding her jaw because she fractured her cheekbone or whatever. And then they storm into the office. She goes, what was that? And Alexa goes, ooh, tough luck, girls. Ah, oh, darn. So, because I'm fair and I care about my talent being happy, even though you let yourself down and you couldn't win tonight, I'm going to give you a match anyway. A Clash of the Castle. Tegan goes, well, that's great. Yeah, you know. I mean, I, I would be happy, but, you know, us losing didn't make me happy. So, sure, I, I appreciate it, Alexa. Who will be facing? She goes, you know, what I really thought was, you know, that's a grand, you know, overseas WWE premium live event. And I thought, what better time to, to get my girl some exposure? Get them a nice easy win on a premium live event. So you two, you can take on Tatum and Ivy. Clash of the Castle in your hometown, Tegan. Don't screw it up like you did tonight. <clears throat> so that's also a kickoff match. Um, Tegan knocks on Kylie Ray against Tatum, Paxi, and Ivy Nile. Because, yeah, I want to get Tegan on the show. That's two kickoff matches now. This and then the six-man tag match that I just decided tonight was going to be on the show between Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, and Roderick Strong against Pete, Dudley, and Ridge. Because that's getting more British people on the show. But, yeah, I have wanted this on there because I wanted Tegan specifically to be the first person to come out at the Cardiff show. You know, I thought that would be nice. 76. Kofi Kingston is. Ever since he was, he had like that run of his life last year, where he was putting on banger after banger, but recently he sort of he really dropped off. And Damian Priest beats him here tonight, seventy eight for him, seventy two for Kofi. He wins with the reckoning in eleven thirteen. Probably not that. Probably the razor's edge, whatever he calls that, because you know the reckoning is taken by somebody else. <laughs> But yeah, another Judgment Day dub. And Damien Priest, you know, last, uh, uh, Unforgiven, they took out Big E. Last week, they took out Xavier Woods. Kofi is the final member of the New Day left for the Grand Jury to take out. But then it's a New Day. Yes, it is. Xavier Woods and Big E are back. The former World Heavyweight. Actually, I'll probably imagine that Woods comes out first to the, to the New Day music. And he stands on the ramp and then he sort of looks behind him and then Big E's theme plays. And he storms out. He's pissed off. Him and him and Woods charge into the ring. Um, Emerson Frost charges at Big E. Big E belly to bellies him over the top rope. Woods takes out King Cobain, whatever. Big ending to Damien Priest as Ziggler scampers away. And Big E grabs a microphone and he goes, You, you Dolph Ziggler, you have no idea. You have no idea what you've started here. You thought you could cost me my world heavyweight championship and you thought I would sit back and take it. No way. So how about you and your two little little friends there? Yeah, he points at Emerson and Ken. He's like, yeah, I'm talking to you two. Face the entire new day. This Saturday night in Cardiff, Wales. A clash of the castle. So yeah. I think that's the last match. I've announced Karrion Cross and Carlin. I've announced the Tegan match. I've announced Gunter and Finn. And yes, I think this is the last match to be announced for the show. So the main show, where we'll go over it in the in the match card video. But I think it's nine matches and then two on the pre-show now. But yeah. Damien, Dolph Ziggler, Emerson Frost and Ken Cobain against Big E, Kofi and Woods. Clash of the Castle. Officially set. Oh, and 
well, I forgot to mention about that segment was obviously they all ran off to the back, leaving Julia out there by herself with no other members of the grand jury for the main event, which I imagine would be, you know, the big eye-opening Julia star-making performance match. Um, she loses. I wouldn't have her tap, I'd have her, like, pass out in the bank statement or whatever. But she proves that she can hang with, like, the best woman in the business, so it's fine. It's a, it's an L, technically on paper, but it's a dub in the minds of the fans. 76 for Julia, 93 for Sasha. And yeah, we end the Go Home episode of Raw with just a banger between these two. But the final segment is going to be just a quick rundown of the match card. Like, I'm not going to do the whole thing here, but I'm going like, to run down the new matches being announced tonight. Big E, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods, the entire new day. Looking for revenge after Dolph Ziggler cost Big E his World Heavyweight Championship back at Unforgiven. Ziggler, Emerson Frost, and Ken Cobain will take on the new day. Also announced another re a rematch from Unforgiven. Kunta will face Finn Balor once again, but this time it isn't Finn Balor, the ordinary man. It's Balor. The Demon. Then we have Team Prime themselves, Logan Paul, KSI. Teaming up once again. Last time like they did at SummerSlam against The Miz and Grace and Waller, this time against Karrion Cross and Carland of the Cross Cult. Then we now have two pre-show matches for you. This one just announced tonight after their altercation here and to get more British people on the show. Pete Dunne, Dudley Davis and Ridge Holland will be in six-man tag team action on the kickoff show against Roderick Strong, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. And then also on the, on the kickoff show, the Welsh girl of the valley is herself, Tegan Knox, teams with Kylie Ray against Tatum Paxley and Ivy Nile. Or maybe just Tegan versus Tatum if Kylie Ray can't work the show. But I think she can. I think a fractured cheekbone will make sure she's fine. I, think, I don't think that's a serious injury. 90-rated show. You know, because I had that as a minor segment, because it, it was. So, yeah. That is the build to Clash of the Castle done with. We have one more show to go before then, and that's Smackdown. But first, how about some heat? Heat is here. And I've realised now that... I know, I know I've said this a couple of times, but like it's really hit, hit it on the nail on the head when I was booking this show. Um, I went, oh, Heat will be like, the, you know, the more story-driven women's show, while Velocity will be the wrestling show. But it's actually kind of reversed, <laughs> you know? Heat is just where the women go to wrestle, while Velocity has silly characters like R.O.E. Sterling and the Lady Killers, who need promo time. Anyway, yeah, four matches on Heat. <laughs> um, Legado de la Sombra, the duo of Selena Vega and Raquel, beat Katana and Caden. Um, Zelina pins Caden with a cutter. In 827. 69 for Raquel, 79 for Zelina, 50 for Caden, and a 62 for Katana Chance. Here's another match. We didn't have Yoko on the show this week. We gave her a week off because, again, you don't have to put everybody on every single show every single week. It's okay to give people weeks off. So, her match is on Heat this week. She beats former NXT Women's Champion Sylvana Lucas in 940 with a cross arm breaker. Um, Sylvana breaks her toe, which isn't ideal, but she can work through that. She gets a 32, while Yoko gets a 67. You know, two very different trajectories for her and Julia right now. But they're both doing their thing either way. Another match. Apparently, ne neither of these women had enough momentum to keep the crowd investive. But Wendy Chu is facing NXT Japan's Wonder Woman champion, Aoi Maikawa, who is Miyu Yamashita renamed because I recently went through and renamed all of NXT Japan because I hadn't done that yet. So, you know, just to, before the inevitable call up, you know, get the name change done and out of the way already. <laughs> so she wins with a Crash Rabbit Heat, 12-22, Aoi gets a 62 and a 44 for Wendy Chu. And then the main event is your weekly um, Candice LeRae banger. Um, Ruby Riot is back. I think she tore her tricep or bicep, whatever it was. She had some sort of a bicep injury. She'd been out for two months. And I had plans for her. But <laughs> they involved Liv. And Liv has sort of just accidentally become Hikaru Shida's best friend. Because I thought that was cool. And I liked it. So I had no way to bring Ruby back. I had to go back to the drawing board of her. And I just thought, you know... 
she can have the weekly Candice LeRae heat match. They go 16 minutes 38 seconds because they both got a lot of psychology. So, you know, this would be one that Twitter is raving about going, oh my god, you've got to watch heat. Ruby Riot's back and she, she and Candice had a banger. Five stars. That's the end of the show. We get a 68. It's heat. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> um, unless you do. Unless you do want to specifically go down there and say, Connor, I thought Heat was great this week. Then please do. If not, let me know what you thought of Raw, because I care more about your thoughts on Raw than Heat. But I do also care about your thoughts on Heat, if you have them. But that's Raw's build, Clash of the Castle, out of the way. There's one more show, one more episode left, and it's Smackdown. See you then.